dies, the sea washes it away, leaving only the wool skin. Most corals lose their color when dead, but they are still ornamental, for they retain their beauty of form. Studded over the whole surface are innumerable tiny holes in which the coral polyp sits. Some corals are soft and seem to have no skeletal environment. To peer down the water world is like flying in a plane above a city. The only way to see the people is to An octopus is not a slimy horror, but a swift, colorful creature which moves with effortless ease as it slides smoothly down to its lair beneath the stone. Along the edge of the reef, fish of all sizes, shapes and colors congregate. Strangely enough, though they're timid in the shallow waters of the lagoon and dart away when approached, if you meet them in the deeper water, they pay very little attention to the stranger in their midst and carry on with their normal activities. Although some of the fish in the tropic seas are similar to those of colder waters, there's also an amazing variety of small, brilliantly colored fish which are peculiar to warm seas and coral reefs. The coral garden beneath the sea is breathtaking in its exquisite beauty. Fragile corals grow to perfection, sheltered from the force of the waves. Even the worms in these undersea gardens are things of beauty. Nature sets us many a riddle. Why should beauty be lavished upon creatures which would appear to have no need or use for colorful adornment? In this submarine world of wonder, beauty peeps out in unexpected places. From a piece of dead coral, a lovely flower bursts into bloom. But that blossom is but another worm, a serpulid, which makes a tubular home in the coral, from which it spreads out its flower-like gills as a net to catch food and oxygen. But here is wonder upon wonder, a sea slug. How inadequate a name for a creature such as this. It could more aptly be named the ballerina of the sea. Its graceful movements are reminiscent of the swirling skirts of a dancer. Science has named this sea slug nudibranch, a word meaning naked gills, for its filmy breathing organs are not placed inside the body like those of most other animals, but are carried outside the body. The gills can be seen growing on the back of this unusual slug. The feather starfish prefers the deeper waters. It belongs to a very ancient family, which fossil remains show, was abundant in the seas millions of years ago, long before met on Earth. Unlike most starfish, it can move swiftly. Many shellfish, which at the beginning of their lives swim free in the ocean, settle down, while still babies, on some convenient stone to which they attach themselves for life. But the lima is a wanderer and remains unattached. It swims through the water by two shells, keeping its balance with the aid of the long tentacles. The lima cannot close its shells completely, for even when closely packed, the tentacles will not fit inside. Whilst many of the tropical fish are more colorful than the reefs they live amidst, the more somber fish throw into relief the soft pastel shades of the corals. This quaint little fellow is called the box fish because its bones are built like a little box outside the flesh.
Scenes beneath tropic waters have the ever-changing charm of a kaleidoscope as brilliantly colored for varied shapes glide into view. The magnificent King Snapper is often called the government's brim because of the broad arrow emblazoned in red across its silvery scales. The most beautiful fish of the coral reef is surely the butterfly cod. Its fins are like wings of gauze, and like the tail, so fine in texture as to be almost transparent. This coy behavior is only a pose. Actually, it's as vain as a peacock, and enjoys an opportunity to flaunt its beauty. But don't be misled by the delicate beauty of the butterfly cod. Remember, before you take any liberties with this dainty dweller in the deep, that beauty is but skin deep. Beneath those colorful, fluttering draperies are sharp spines, loaded with a poison which burns with an agonizing pain like liquid fire. The butterfly cod is a slow swimmer, and if it did not have this potent means of defense, the coral reefs would soon lose one of their loveliest inhabitants. There's a big fish here. Can you see it? Let's take a closer look. See its eye and the moving gills. Now can you see it? Unlike the butterfly cod, it's a master of camouflage, relying upon invisibility, not only as a means of protection, but to assist in seizing its unsuspecting prey. In the quiet of the undersea's world, danger lurks in strange forms. That harmless-looking growth on the stone is a killer, a giant sea anemone. An unwary fish has brushed against the tentacles and been paralyzed by a battery of stinging cells before being engulfed by the hungry mouth hidden beneath the tentacles. Despite the deadly power of the anemone stings, there's an amazing friendship in it and a little fish called Percula. Should Percula be frightened by a larger fish, the little fellow will dash for safety right in among the stinging tentacles, where it is never stung nor eaten. In fact, when badly frightened, Percula goes right inside the anemone's mouth and hides in the stomach of the anemone until the coast is clear again. Another fish, Amphiprion, enjoys the same privileges. In return for the anemone's protection, these fish attract the attention of other fish, which, expecting to catch a tasty meal, make a dash for the little fish, which immediately disappear among the tentacles, leaving the pursuer to be stung and perhaps eaten by the anemone. The hermit crab depends for its safety upon finding the empty shell of a dead univalve. Although the crab's back, head, and nippers are heavily armored, it has a very tender tail with a thin, sensitive skin. As the crab grows, it must continually seek a larger shell with a more comfortable sitting room. In a flash, it tucks its tender tail into safety. Over goes the shell, and away it scuttles ready to take on all comers. At low tide, there is no need for diving gear to see many marvels in the shallow lagoons, which are the happy hunting grounds for shell collectors. Many creatures seek shelter beneath the rocks. The flesh of the mutton fish is relished by a number of reef inhabitants, and since it has only a small shell, it is much happier under cover. Dropped back into the water, without any waste of time, it makes for shelter beneath the nearest stone. The 
The handsome tiger cowrie, however, builds a remarkably strong shell and crawls slowly through the coral pools with the ponderous invulnerability of an armoured tank. If disturbed, it immediately withdraws into the snug shelter of its shell and waits patiently within its well-designed fortress until the enemy departs. In the mating season, turtles congregate in large numbers around some of the coral islands. In far-off prehistoric times, turtles were land animals which deserted the land to make their homes in the sea. But nature insists that at nesting time, they reach their ancient past and return to the land to make their nest. During the late afternoon, they come in close to the beaches, awaiting the coming of night for their nest-making operations are carried out in the darkness. Green turtles weigh hundreds of pounds. They're the main ingredient of the famous turtle soup. These tracks leading up from the beach indicate that the turtles have already commenced nesting. The little holes are made in the centre of the track by the turtle's tail and tell the turtle has gone up the beach to lay. Whereas going back to the sea after completing its nest, the tail drags in the sand and makes a long furrow. As night came, taking cameras and powerful lights, we set off in search of a turtle making its nest. Shortly after midnight, we found a turtle just commencing work. With powerful thrusts of her front flippers, she digs a depression well above the reach of the highest tides. Then commences one of the wonders of nature. With her hind flippers, she digs a neat pit nearly a foot in diameter. Although in complete darkness, this clumsy creature works with delicate precision. Deftly, she lifts each flipper full of sand and places it carefully down alongside the hole. Then, with a quick movement of her flipper, she expertly flicks it away before digging down again. So neatly is the operation carried out that hardly a grain of sand falls back into the pit. Once the egg laying commences, if her flippers are handled very gently, she makes no objection, but allows them to be drawn apart so we may see the eggs dropping steadily into the pit. The dawn came while the turtle was still at work. Usually she completes her nest before dawn, but the glare of our lamps had upset her timetable and every few minutes she'd ceased work until the lights were switched off. Even under normal conditions, the whole operation of nest making and egg laying takes several hours to complete. She'd laid nearly 200 eggs. There's a fortune waiting for the man who can cross a turtle with a hen. The sand is now raked and smoothed over the eggs until all signs of the pit are obliterated. Her slow movements show how weary she is. Although once land animals, countless centuries of life in the sea make the turtle's brief visits to the land something of an ordeal. She completes the nest by throwing sand in all directions, making it impossible to tell just where the eggs were laid. Once its eggs are laid, the turtle has no further interest in them. She returns to the sea, leaving the eggs to hatch in the sand, warmed by the tropic sun. The natives enjoy a meal of turtle eggs and have devised a simple yet efficient method of finding them. The tracks up the beach 
show that a turtle has gone up to make her nest will have been dug just where the track ends at the top of the beach. A spear is driven into the sand, probing the whole area of the nest. Eventually the spear is withdrawn, sticky, and with sand adhering to it. That stickiness means that the spear has pierced the turtle's egg. Digging down into the sand at the spot from where the spear was withdrawn soon opens up the egg pit about a foot or so beneath the surface. When the turtle filled the pit in, the kneading and packing with her hind flippers caused the sand to filter in between the eggs and they are now closely packed and supported by the warm sand. Since the tracks leading to the nest had not been washed away by high tides, these eggs will be fresh as the nest must have only been made a few hours ago. If thrown upon the sand, turtle eggs bounce like a rubber ball. This is an ordinary hen's egg. Now, a turtle's egg. Here is the explanation of the bouncing egg. The shell has no limey coating, but a tough parchment-like skin. It must be torn, not broken open. Although the yolks of the two eggs are similar, the whites are different, that of the turtle being a stiffer, jelly-like substance. There's a very marked difference, however, when the eggs are cooked. Whilst the white of the hen's egg sets very quickly, the white of the turtle's egg will not set. It remains a slimy jelly. Most people prefer to eat only the yolks, which are quite palatable. The eggs left in the nest have commenced developing, and the microscope reveals an embryo turtle two weeks old. At six weeks, it is still small, but growing rapidly. At approximately nine weeks, the baby turtles dig their way up through the sand, and out they come. The time of hatching varies. If the nest was made where the hot sun beats down all day, the eggs hatch out earlier, whilst if in the shade, they may not hatch out until two or three weeks later. Although the baby turtles have never seen the sea, Without any hesitation, they scramble away in the right direction. The call of the sea is strong within them, and they waste no time in answering that call. baby turtle's energy and self-reliance, it is still but a tiny creature. And yet, should it survive the perils that await it, it will one day be a huge creature, weighing hundreds of pounds. Unlike the parent, which is helpless when turned on its back, the baby turtle quickly flips over and makes for the sea. The shell at this age is still flexible, and it will be some time before it becomes a hard and bony armor like that of the adult. With the sea in sight, the babies make a frantic spurt down the beach. Although the mother turtle lays so many eggs, only a small percentage lives. 